a lot of our people are not in church today. And the Bible says we all should be our what? Brother's keeper. So look around. Your people that you didn't see. Don't wait for the church to do it. After the service, call to ask why they are not in church. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. We are standing on the topic this month, wisdom for the saved. Ogmo bala. You know why we are taking this topic this month? A lot of errors are flying on the internet. And you know that phone now has become a mobile TV to the civilized. The people on the, in the city have access to it. People are listening to different kind of jargons online. And as your pastor, the Lord placed it in my heart that we should stabilize the truth. We should, I should make sure that I re-echo the truth to your hearing. On Wednesday, the first part that we took, we took the part of prayer because online it is trending that the song that uh, this uh, evangelist uh, Ebuka sang, that I'll pray, I'll pray. If I don't pray, the devil will make mess of me. So men of God came up and began to say, the song is an error. They said, the finished work of Jesus showed that the devil cannot make mess of you, whether you pray or not. <laughs> You know, they have, they, have, they have taken hold of the issue of tithing. Now they are taking hold of prayer. A lot of Christians are, not, are no longer tithing. But thank God for those of you that hold on to the truth. So, and, and I said throughout the Wednesdays of this month, we are taking prayer. If you, if you watched it online or you were here last week when I said, you will see that I showed you scriptures that even as Jesus ascended, the disciples stayed at the upper room. What were they doing? They were in one accord, praying. We went to Acts 12. When the disciple Peter was arrested after James was killed, the Bible says prayer without ceasing was offered on behalf of, of Peter. So, Anybody that succeeds to take your giving life, hear me, and goes ahead to take your prayer life. And the one I want to talk about this morning, I still heard them saying it online, that you cannot lose your salvation. That once you are born again, if you like smoke, even if you for commitment, you can't lose your salvation. Ah! We are in the end time. Now that's why I will talk on that in this service. So that the devil will, you know, I, I used to wonder when, you know, Jesus said, for many are those that will make the broad way that leads to hell. Why? Upon all the churches, upon all, it is difficult to enter a house on our street that you won't find Christian. Why will many still go to hell? They asked Jesus Christ, what will be the number one sign of the end time? He said, watch out that no man deceive you. So deception. Why are they trying to water the things, the principles that the Bible upholds? Now you see that if they succeed with this again, you know, they have started, some of them have, they have come up online now. You look at how they are trying to rubbish Pastor Adibwe online. And I drank tea with God. If somebody said he drank tea with God, which one is your own? Abby? Which one is your own? Were you there? What can God not do? Ah, we are talking about the king of kings here. Which means if you question that, you should question Jesus multiplying bread. Where did the bread that the 5,000 heard from? Where did it come from? 
There are some things that are mysteries that we should not even talk about. So that's why if there's a better time to be close to your Bible, it's now. And every man, please, all our men, look towards this direction. This is the time for you to become the pastor of your family. Teach your children the Bible. Are you hearing me? You know, these are the days when we give them our phones. And who knows? Some of them may go online and begin to hear jargons. This is the time. You, you play the role of Abraham. The Lord said, and he shall surely command his children. This is the time to teach them the truth of the word. So let's read. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Wisdom for the saved. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. We are going to read together after the count of three. One, two, and three. Can we go? For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. By one Jesus Christ. I want me to lie, it's not here. She will have read the Yoruba Bible for me. Palu Ambe. Oye Bamika. Oni nje bi nikpa e she okuni kan. Iku o joba nikpa e nekana. Oni melo melo la wanti nba okolopo ori ofe. Ati e bun ododo. Yo joba ni nui ye. Nikpa se e nekan. Now, if you look at, okay, sit down, please. Father, we ask for deep understanding in this service in Jesus' name. You know, what I want to talk about in this service is this. We received the abundance of grace, pay attention, and the gift of righteousness by salvation in Christ. Now, when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, when you became born again, you received what? Abundance of grace. I will explain. And you also receive the gift of righteousness. Now, what does grace mean? Grace means to pardon a person. Now, the difference in between the Old Testament uh, 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 law, the, the law in the Old Testament, and now that we are under grace is that in the Old Testament, every mistake, hear me, brings immediate judgment. That's why you see that when the two sons of Aaron carried fire into the temple, God said, don't take fire into the altar. They took fire into the altar. What, what happened? Instantly, fire came out and destroyed them. He's now saying that by the death of Jesus Christ, we receive what? Abundant grace. Now, in Yoruba, now, which means even when you make some mistakes and you realize your mistake, Lord, I'm sorry for this I'm, I've done. By the power of that grace of God, you are pardoned. Am I communicating? The Bible also now talks about us receiving as gift righteousness. Now, and I wrote here, the righteousness of Christ that we have received is by faith. We did not do anything than to accept Jesus Christ to receive it. We accepted the righteousness of Christ by us receiving what? Salvation. So, Jesus became born again to give us those two. Number one, abundant grace. Number two, he gave us righteousness. I wrote here, it is by the righteousness of Christ that we have access to the Holy Spirit. You know, I told you last week, man, every man that is born is born a sinner. That's why we all need to have a day that you say, this is the day I gave my life to Christ that I said yes to Jesus. Now, if you are yet to have a day that you gave your life to Christ, you are not yet born again. Nobody is born as born again. Ah, biwala tumbi, hello. Bo bo eni ti abi abi wasi no eche. Unla shi bodo ni ojo ta fa ye wa fun Christi. That's why they ask you, when did you give your life to Christ? 
So when you gave your life to Christ, you received the gift of God's grace, abundant grace, and two, you received the righteousness of Christ. Now, this righteousness of Christ, I'm trying to explain so that you will understand. This righteousness of Christ makes us to have access to the Holy Spirit. Don't forget, every man was born a sinner by the sin of Adam. Are you following my teaching this morning? By the sin of Adam. So, but by the death and resurrection of Jesus, Jesus died to pay the price for our sins. So, your past sins, gone. Now, you now have a new life, a new, you have righteousness. By that righteousness, the Holy Spirit comes inside of you. What do we now want to treat this morning? I have a question. What then do we want to treat today? Can a born again Christian, hear me, lose his salvation after he or she has become born again? I put it in another way. Once I receive the righteousness of Christ, does it mean that I will still make heaven if I continue in sin after I have confessed that I have I, I that I, after I've confessed that I have Jesus? Now, Kini Berry, Tafewo, Mokon, Kwisono, Miji, Nio, Kwe, Eni Toti Faye, from Christi, Njo She, She, Fun, Lati, So, Ibale, Nubi, Yeni, now, katunwa tu lona mi pe, te yon ba fa ye fun kristi. Ti yo wa ye gbi a ye e she e pada. Now, to de je wakwe, mo ti gba jesu kristi. Gege bi o luwa, a ti yo lukba la mi, in jo ma ron ron wabi, ti yo ba fa, fe she sele. Now, that's what we are going to look at. And that's the argument online. Because a lot of young people now, when they hear that message, they call it uh, the message of abundant. Uh, no, they call it. Uh, I, I'll try to. If I remember, I'll, I'll tell you what they call it. You know, a lot of people are saying it now. Listen, no matter what you do, it doesn't matter. The blood of Jesus has covered you. We are going to answer that question in today's service. Praise the Lord, beloved. I read. I wrote here. You can lose your salvation if you continue in sin. You will not make heaven. Understand it clearly. Because to become born again, the first thing required to be born again is what we call repentance. Now what does it mean to repent? To repent is to turn away from, from what? Let's not use sin. To repent is to turn away from a usual practice. You've been going a direction before and you just decide to say, I turn. That's what it means to repent. I turn. That's what it means to repent. Are you now saying you turn and accept Jesus and you turn back to follow the way? You will go to hell. The gift of righteousness gives us access to the Holy Spirit, but we need to continue, you know, to maintain the gift of righteousness by the life of God. Let's look at these three scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4, 17 to 24. Colossians chapter 3, 1 to 11. Matthew chapter 7, 22 to 27. Ephesians 4, 17 to 24. Colossians 3, 1 to 11. Matthew 7, 22 to 27. Let's look at all these scriptures one after the other. Once you are ready for me, let me know. Ephesians 4, 17 to 24. I want every one of us to see it. There's what we call the life of God. Now, this is efficient. He said, this I say, therefore, let's read from the Amplified Version. Amplified is a study Bible. It will help you to understand the Bible very well. That's why every child of God, go and begin to buy Bible versions now. So, in your personal study, you can understand certain things. Give us the Amplified Version, please. Let's read with the Amplified Version, a study scripture. I'm waiting for you. We don't have all the time. Thank you. Now look at this. It says, so this I say and solemnly testify in the name of the Lord as in his presence that you must no longer what? Live as the Edens in bracket, the Gentiles. Don't live like the Edens in bracket, how? The Gentiles. 
Look at, they do it in their perverseness, in the fully vanity and emptiness of their soul and the filthy, that's the bracket, of their mind. Don't live like that anymore. Move on. We are going to stop when we get to verse 24. Verse 18 now. Let's go on. Verse 18. Their, their moral understanding is what is darkened. That's why they are different from you. Their own moral understanding is darkened. Just like what a man said. How can you have a wife at home? And you are trying to say, I want to have a side chick outside. A man said it online and I learned from it. He said Coca-Cola in a bottle. Coca-Cola in a plastic. Coca-Cola in can. Coca-Cola is co in cup. Is it different from Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola is Coca-Cola. How will you say a, a, a light woman is different from a, a black woman? That it is stupidity that makes you to say, ah, Coca-Cola in bottle is different from Coca-Cola in can. All women are the same. Hello? Talk to me now. So it talks about the, the, their moral understanding is darkened. If it is not darkened, they will not behave anyhow. And their reasoning is what? Is be clouded. They are alienated, that is, they have become, ex, ex, in bracket, ex, estranged, self-banished from the life of God. Can you see? There is a life of God. There is a life of God that every one of us need to live. After you become born again, there is a life of God. You cannot just continue to live life the way it comes. There is a standard. There is a pattern. Let's read on. Let's read on. Now, let's read on. From the life of God. With no share in it. This is because of the ignorance, the want of knowledge and perception, the willful blindness that is deep-seated in them due to their hardness of heart, to the insensitivity of their moral nature. Move to the next verse, verse 19. In their spiritual apathy, they have become what callous and past feelings and reckless and have abandoned themselves a prey to be unbraided sensuality, eager, and he kept on going on. Now, to, talking about the eager and greedy to indulge in every, in every form of impurity. Now, which means that after you are born again, if you don't want, if you are not living the life of God, you will lose your salvation. Beloved, I know people that we became born again together. The day I gave my life to Christ, we were about three that got born again. I, the son of an allergy, my second friend, the son of a herbalist, and the third one, he find the son of a Catholic. We're three. Now, I got born again, we got born again together. But when we started the work, I didn't have a Bible. Because the son, he find the son of the Catholic man was a rich. The father was rich. So, I had to borrow his own Bible. It was his Bible that I used to study. Hello? But he was not interested in continuing my work, his work with God. So, he gave me his Bible and backslid it. The other one too that was a Muslim could not continue. Do you know that the next time I saw him, he was already smoking in the ahem. And we gave our life to Jesus together. Now let somebody now say, now, nah, yeah, uh, even with all the Indian ahem he's smoking, we still make heaven. It's a lie. From the pit of hell. That's what we call the life of Christ. Can we finish that scripture because of our time? Hello? I didn't hear you. Verse 20. Okay, let's take 21, 21, 21, 21, 21. I've taken 20. Assuming that you have really heard, heard him, and have been taught by him, as all truth is in Jesus, embodied and personified in him. 22. Strip yourself. Can you see that you have responsibility? He says, strip yourself of your former nature. Ebanka, you have version, verse 22, yeah. Am I got 22? 22. Uh huh. Only KSD me no ni. Only a bio coni. Can you see that it is not God's responsibility for you to put that? He said, You put on the new man. A bio coni to two more, yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Can you see? You put on that old nature. You put off the old. Now, go back to that same verse, uh, verse 22. Now, show us the King James Version. That's what she quoted. Now, this one, I've simplified it for us. But the King James talked about it as the old man. 
when you give your life to Christ, he said that you put off concerning the former conversation. What? The old man. Which is corrupt. To the deceitful lost. That's the old man. You can't say, I will continue in sin and because I've confessed Jesus as the Lord, I will now make heaven at last. Ah, It's not possible. Quickly jump to Colossians. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. There's no time. Uh, chapter 3, 1 to 11. Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1. He said, if ye then be raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Yes. Move fast. We don't have all the time. Set your affection on things above. Not on things on the earth. Move on. For you are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Then shall you also appear with him. Move to the next. Move to the next. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Look at that. Fornication. Uncleanliness. Inordinate affection. Now, I want us to go to the Amplified. You will see how it is being broken down for us to see again. Amplified, only this verse. Only this verse. Be fast, be fast, be fast, be fast. We don't have all the time. Shagada base, labels. He said, so, do what? Kill. Deadened. Deprive of power. The evil desire locking in your members. It means that something inside of you still wants you to continue to sin. Even after you have committed Christ, uh, committed your life to Christ. In Kokonshiwa, Ninuwa, Toshi Fekama Deshe, Bibeli Nikapa. You know, what they are trying to teach you online is to make you feel that you don't have anything to do once you are born again. Jesus has done everything. Ah, if Jesus has done everything, sir, we all should go and sleep. Abby? You didn't hear me. We all should go and sleep. Just like what I told you. He conquered the devil and gave us his name. So that when the devil raises his ugly head against us, we call his name. It's not that the devil will not raise his, raise his ugly head. It's not that the devil will not stay out battle against us. Let someone now be saying, Jesus has done everything. Oh, Jesus has done everything. Am I communicating? Let's take one more scripture. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 to 27. Matthew 7, 22 to 27. We didn't finish all those reading because of time. Matthew chapter 7, 22 to 27. Many will say to me, look at that, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Why? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Because you only confessed me, but you didn't depart from iniquity. Now let's go to my reading. What then shall, what then should I as a believer do with the righteousness of God that I receive as a gift? You should maintain it by deliberately living the life of God. What should you do after you've given your life to Jesus? Maintain the righteousness of Christ by making up your mind to live the life of God. You make up your mind, I will live the life of God. If you don't, if you don't make up your mind to live the life of God, hear me, you will waste the death of, of Jesus on the cross. You will just see that you continue in sin. You have confessed Jesus is Lord. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior, but you will still go back to fornication. Lord, I've confessed you as my Lord and personal Savior. You will still go back to lying and stealing. But what should you do as a Christian? The moment you have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord, you should maintain the righteousness by deliberately living the life of sin. You deliberately live, the, you deliberately, Romans chapter 8 from verse 1. You, let's look at it. You deliberately say, I will live the life of God. I will live the life of God. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who are those people? Who walk not after the flesh. 
Not those who confess Jesus and are still walking after the flesh. Esa, what if you look at Jesus by me? And he was minister's scholar. Introduced himself to me as a pastor. Entered my office. Told me he needed money to do something. He's coming back to bring it to me. And I borrowed I told him, this money is not mine. 3,900 that time. It's over 15 years now. He collected the money. He said, Pastor, I'm coming back tomorrow to come and give you the money. He's a pastor in CAC Church, but never returned it today. They confessed Jesus, but they didn't make up their mind to live the life of God. You could also be in church today that you have confessed Jesus. I confess Jesus is my Lord. You are joining us to sing all the songs, but you have not made up your mind that you will, you will live the life of God. The, the life of God cannot be lived without determination. I will tell you when we get to that point. Because we are in a wicked world. Praise the Lord. Tap your neighbor for, for me. Tell him to open his ears. Question number two. Is it possible to live a life of God in a sinful, corrupt world? Is it possible to live a life of God in a sinful, corrupt world? Genesis, let's look at two or one scripture. Genesis chapter 6, from verse 5 to verse 9. Or we'll look at the two. Genesis chapter 6, 5 to 9. Is it possible to live a life of God in a sinful world? Is it possible? Because I know that's what some of you will be thinking. Pastor, corrupt. Let's read together. Because I see that some people are already closing their eyes. They don't like this kind of truth. Let's read together. Sit properly. Look at the, the scripture. One, two, three, and let's go. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Verse 6. Let's go. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. Next verse. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made man. Next verse. Next verse. But what? But Noah found grace in the sight of God. If you stop here, you say, But go to verse 9. What was it? What led to that grace? Let's read. One, two, and let's go. These are the generation of Noah. Noah was what? I didn't hear you. Who was Noah? A just man. And what? I'm perfect in his generation. And Noah what? Walk with God. Which means the whole earth was corrupt, but one man decided that would not be corrupt. So let me ask you again. Is it possible to live a life of God in a sinful world? I, I didn't hear you. Engineer, I didn't know. <laughs> is it possible? It's possible. No, limo <laughs> Noah is an example. Now, look at another example. 1 Kings chapter 19. 14 to 18. Let's look at that one too. 1 Kings chapter 19. 14 to 18. 1 Kings 19. 14 to 18. 1 Kings 19. 14 to 18. Let's look at that one too. Thank you. We are going to read together. One, two, and let's go. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord. God of hosts, because the children of Israel had forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altar, and slain thy prophet with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. This was Elijah complaining, I want to die. Let's read verse 15. Let's go. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazel. To be king over Syria. Verse 16. I didn't hear your own voice. Let's go. And Jeho, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Ab Abel Meloha, shall 
thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Thou, then, then, next verse. And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay. And him that escaped the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Then look at verse eight, uh, 18. Yet, let's read loud. Yet, I have left me. How many? 7,000. In, in what? In Israel. All the knees which have not bowed unto Baal and every mouth which had not kissed him. You know, Elijah was saying, I'm the only one. But God said, you deceive yourself. He won in Concord. 7,000 they are still there. Because some of you are saying, Pastor, could possible say, King of Big Bia, you do to Nino Ayeto Korob, Nina Interior of now. If God should open your eyes to see those that are still standing, you'll be shocked. Say after me, I've made up my mind. I will be different. I will live the life of God in this corrupt heart. If you fall, it's because you choose to fall. If you fall, it's because you are careless. But that is not possible to live the life of God. Hear me, it's a lie. So I've shown you two examples. Another question. What does it take to live the life of God in a sinful world? What does it take to live the life of God in a sinful world? I will tell you four things and I'll close. What does it take to live the life of God in a sinful world? What does it take? Ayeti book were corrupt by pastor. How will it be possible? Ayeta when you like you talk to your key run celebrate. What will it be? How will it be possible? What does it take to live the life of God? Hear me. Number one, it takes personal commitment to discover and rediscover scriptural truths. Take note of that. It takes what? Personal commitment. To discover and to rediscover scriptural truth. Now, what do I mean to discover? Create time to read the Bible on your own. Two, the truths that they have told you. Why do I, why do I say rediscover? The truths they have told you, have you checked it? A lot of Christians doesn't have Bible study life. Hello? They know prophets. They know prophetic quotes. They have different kind of oil of prophets. They go from prayer mountain to prayer mountains. If you want to know how weak some Christians are, let somebody wear any kind of garment now. Just come to the middle of the road and begin to shout. People don't know God. A lot of people are coming to church. They don't have a personal Bible study life. Can I look up, church. It is the truth that you have understanding of that you have zeal to practice. Again, son That's why create time to discover and rediscover scriptural truths. That's the foundation for living the life of God. If I tell you the temptations I have faced, some of you will be shocked. Some of you say, Pastor, how did you escape? I faced temptation of money before. I've faced temptation of opportunity. Where they will tell you if you, uh, to, if you don't do so, so and so thing with all person, you cannot have access. But, sir, no, it's not that they told me the truth. The truth they told me, I also rediscovered it. I studied scripture. I went back to check it and I saw that this thing is true. We are in a corrupt world. The world that we are in. It's a world where you will see a 17-year-old boy 
toasting a 70 year old woman. I get our one way. We finish service one Sunday morning. I don't like to be saying things like this. And somebody came to see me after service. A member of our church. And I said, I've not been seeing your husband in church. He said, sir, some things are going on in our house. I said, what is going on? He said, my husband has a separate room. In our church. He has a shrine. He uses goat blood to bath every morning. People are just coming to church. They don't have one on one encounter. That's why some of you in the children's church, some of you don't know at times when I and my wife make some decisions. Some people just come to church and bring gifts. Oh, yeah, equisani on children. Tomati was of an egg basin less in office. Our lamon, our lamon to see. Hello, me and my wool, only children's church is your man. I don't want to be a baby, my man, you're going to make a biscuit. If you know what we know, you don't. So if you don't know the reason why, if you want to do better, you, you can't go and bring cake here. You give us the money, we will go and buy the cake at Food Co. We know what, we know why we are saying what we are saying. It's not everybody that is coming to church that is coming to serve God. Some people are you looking for destinies to use. And they will tell them, oh yeah, lo she sara, fuck where you are. I don't know them. I think no, I think no, I think no. But we don't know, when we establish rules, some of you will now team up to be fighting us. Say truth. Ewo, o tote ba mo, e le ni tara ati she o. That's why you need to discover truth. You need to rediscover truth. And how can you discover truth and rediscover truth? You need to have a personal Bible study relationship with God. Do you know that it was that Noah story we read? The Bible says he walked with God. It was what he discovered about God that made him not to be like the others. He was walking with God. He discovered certain things in his work with God. That's what made him not to like to be. No, no, I won't join these people. I won't join these people. There was something he saw in his walk with God. Just like what is happening now in this end time. You know people are backsliding. A lot of people have stopped tightening. A lot of people are not going to church. A lot of people are not, they don't, they don't submit to any pastor. No, nobody can call them to order because of the things they are hearing on the internet. But if you have a personal understanding of the truth. Can they deceive you about what you know? I told you my encounter with, with God when it comes to Titan. I was reading, it was not my pastor that told me, I was reading the Bible. And I saw that Abraham came out of battle and he won in that battle. He gave a tenth of everything he had to Melchizedek. And the Bible says Melchizedek was the, was uh, it, if you go to Hebrew, it's like a type of Christ. He does not have a father, does not have a mother, nobody knows anything about Melchizedek. And the Bible says, and Melchizedek blessed him. That was where I discovered that tithe is a love offering. It's an offering of you saying, Lord, from this business I have done that I've made profit, take 10%. Because he knows 
you have preserved me for one whole month. I have worked. I did not collect the money and go and use it to fix sickness. Ah, father, from this one month income, ah, I give you my 10%. Ibe libitiri from Abraham's life. So what will, now, what will somebody now come online to tell me? But because a lot of you don't have encounter with the Bible. Say, so, yeah. I didn't hear you. Shout it aloud. What about coming to church? What about fellowship? I saw it in scriptures. The Bible says they devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine. Discover and rediscover the truth. When they teach you something, go back home, go and restudy it. So I wrote it down this way in my notes. Zeal to operate the truth is drawn from the personal understanding of it. Write it down that way. Zeal to operate the truth is drawn from the personal understanding of it. That's why I always spend time to study the truth until you have a personal understanding of it. What's the question we are answering? Does it, what does it take to live the life of God in a sinful world? Number two, don't mingle with people or things that can lure you gradually from the path of the life of God. Take note of this number two as well. Don't mingle with people or things that can lure you gradually from the path of the life of God. Now, I don't know how to interpret this one in Yoruba language, uh, but maybe my explanation will make you understand. Beloved, there are certain things that you yourself know that you have soft spot for. Now, the devil will not come against you in areas that you are strong, that he knows that uh, they, he cannot influence you. Watch out for things that can lure your heart from the part of, part, part, pathway of the life of God. Watch out for things like that. Things that you yourself know that, ah, if I put my hand into this thing, if I join this social club, if I begin to relate with this kind of people, if I begin to like this kind of thing, I, 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 the way I, it, it is, I know myself, oh, I know myself, oh, I'm not strong enough to continue. In, you know, are you getting what I'm saying? I may not be able to manage it. Oh. Now, when you notice such things, begin to guide yourself against it. Now, look up. Let me give you two examples. As we all are now. Some of you cannot stand it if they load your fridge with alcohol and the glass is transparent and you are living in the same house with it. And you see it sweating. And you are going like this and you are coming like this. Some of you cannot stand it. But do you know that some people can live inside that same room with that fridge, no matter what is it, and we not even see it for one year. Do you understand? Our level of grace differs. Now, the same way, some of you can live with an opposite sex that is not your wife, and nothing will happen. Some of you cannot. Pay attention to the things that can easily draw you from the path. Pay attention to things that can easily, if you notice that ah, this thing can draw me out of this part of righteousness, this part of the, the life of God that I'm living, abstain from those things gradually. I'm showing you how to stay, stay strong in a corrupt world. We were in church one Sunday morning. A woman came, she, she's, she joined the church, she was doing very well. The, the wife of your landlord was doing very well. And she, she was saying that a church member before she traveled. And she came and said, Pastor, I just love you. I like you. Natural like. I love you. I like you. And I feel like encouraging you. We have this project we are doing. They, they, they we're doing a contract of about 40 flats. Sir, I feel that I should give you the contract of supplying cement so that you can make something from it. She liked me. 
But me, as at that time, I saw that if I collect the contract, my mouth will be closed against the truth. Because she was not even the legal wife of the man. And she's coming to church. If I collect the contract, will I still be bold enough to tell her, stop that thing you are doing there? Because I will have to be giving her account now. I'll be giving initial account for God. So I said, let me think about it, ma. I don't want to trap myself. The following Sunday, after she finished, she came up. After service, she came up. Pastor, I came to see you. How far? I've told my husband already. And my husband said, there's no problem. We will finance you with some money to supply the cement. I said, I'm very sorry, ma. I'm not a business person. And two, I don't do business with members. Ah, no, pastor, you, you don't need to be involved. You know what? You know what? You know what, pastor? I will give you the supplier and uh, show them where they will be offloading. You just, let me just know that you are the one in charge. I said, nah, I'm sorry, ma. I'll be, let me stand at the point of praying for you. Because Kunipa Daribe Mo. And I know myself, Timba Supply, Timba Supply, Jibu Bati Beyo. Timu De Wukumu Tingwa for 20 years, Jibu Iti Yombe. Matuma, what next place? Matuti Supply, Niaka, Hele, better Ju Abi. Ketomo, Matima, Missy Service. Eh, where if I have a Jack Engineer, we engineer Malia. The engineer has gone back work, work, coach it in Minong Bang, and go money. I say, no, ni supply, Connie. Are you getting what I'm saying? Before you know it, in your dark beautiful ministry, in hell, you two begin to observe what are those things that can easily lure you out of the way of God. Sure, hello, Barry. Daughters, that will be showing you human hair. Boyfriend, Melora, for me, mercy. Oh, Rin. Eh? The following week, what's wrong with me? Boyfriend, me, no, no. She wrong with me, you know what she's saying. To that, to the other one, ah, mercy, oh, my God. Check in to, thank you, one of you, two, three. Before you know it, check in to do this, as it can no more. Why come I told you any? A little convey a jerry, a bedroom Number three. Number three. Enforce yourself to live the life of God regularly until it becomes a part of you. Enforce yourself. It's not easy to live the life of God. How many of you know that? Oh, you don't know. It's not easy. Sir? It's not easy. So easy, ni? Ko easy. Lati big bia ye, omo lorun. Ko easy. Ah, esa, ko easy. Ah, ko easy. Ta won yon lorun fori ba le fe shu ba she. Ko easy. Ah, I had one. I was touched. It was one of our former governors. The person went to approach him for a job. The man said, he said, the governor told him, I can't give you this job unless you join our meeting. He said it was later I discovered that even the governor is a no-boni man. So he said, if you come to the meeting at the Oboni uh, confraternity, we will sign it for you. He said he, he, he couldn't believe himself and this man goes to church. So it's not easy to live the life of God, especially in this world that is corrupt. But you enforce yourself. You do what? You enforce yourself. People, people are not ready to help in this in this corrupt world now. If you're a female and you 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 have any help, any you need any help, and it's a male that is there. In a corrupt world, they will tell you. Uh, they told one of our daughters now. She needed to work in GT Bank. She passed the interview, and the man told her, "Come to room four. So so and so will tell to collect your employment letter."
and not even as a staff or contract staff to nail. Contract staff to Yaki could see increment of salary. A loaded in salary as at that time it was 50,000. When she told me, I said, leave the job. After like three days, the man called. You didn't come again. He said, I told my pastor. And my pastor said, I should forget about it. Maybe the man was afraid that maybe we'll take action. He said, okay, there's no problem. Go to social and so office and collect your letter. Enforce yourself. Until it becomes your style. That, I mean, okay, I won't lie. Until it becomes your style that you will not lie. I won't cheat until it becomes your style that you won't cheat. And the last one, you keep praying and staying alert. You continue praying for yourself and you continue to stay at alert. At times when I look at some pastors, we that holds the truth will be saying, Lord, you see them with lies. They are flying up. You saw one, I was looking at one on the internet. He was lying. Maybe the person they brought that we confirmed the prophecy did not get it. He was pulling the trouser of the lady. Trying to pull her. You are so so and so. The one said, no. I see you do so so and so business. He said, no, sir. He was not pulling. Pulling the trousers. And upon all, the crowd are still saying, Ride on, Papa. You know what you should do? Be praying for yourself. You know why you should be praying for yourself? So that you so that you not be carried away by the glory of the fakes. Don't give up. God still exalts his own. But when the glory that comes from God comes, it will shock everybody. But you stay focused. But you just stay focused. One thing with God is that he won't allow you to come up if he has not proven you very well at the base. So that you will not go up there to bring shame to his name. So with this truth, I want to summarize. It is possible for a person to lose his salvation. I have seen people, a lot of our, my friends, that lost their salvation. And the righteousness that Jesus gave you requires that you maintain it by a deliberate decision to live the life of God. Me, I made up my mind. That I will live the life of God. Have you? Make up your mind. There is sin everywhere. But make up your mind to live the life of God. Let's begin to thank the Lord for what we have had. And begin to pray for deeper understanding. Let it register in your spirit. Tell them to bring the children in. Let it register in my spirit, O God. The truth that I have had today. Father, register it in my spirit. In the name of Jesus. Help me that I will not be corrupt. Help me that I will be able to take my stand as a child of God in this corrupt world. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. In the corrupt world, help me, Lord, that I will take my stand as a believer. I will not fall to sin. Every form of temptation on my part, I receive grace, the overcoming grace, the grace to overcome. The overcomer's grace, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself. Jesus has won the battle for me. I will not fail in the name of Jesus. Jesus has won the battle for me. I will not fail in the name of Jesus. He has promised he will never fail, never fail. I will follow him. I will follow him. He has promised. He has promised. He will never fail. His faithfulness is 
is forevermore. He is his faithfulness. Rise up on your feet. He is forevermore. I say, my God has promised. He has. He will never fail. I will. I will. My God has promised. He has promised. He will never fail. His faithfulness is forevermore. His faithfulness is forevermore. Father, we thank you for your word that has come forth again this afternoon. We ask, O oh God, that the grace to live the life of God rest upon us in Jesus' name. We have confessed Jesus as Lord. Help us, O oh God. That will not go back to sinfulness in Jesus' name. You will strengthen us. You will uphold us. That truth, we will have deeper understanding of truth. And we will run this race and finish well. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. I bless this oil today as I anoint your people with it today, Lord.